This video explains how to combine a line and bar chart with a double axis using the ggplot2 package in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video, I will show you an example. And for this example, we first need to create an example data frame, as you can see in lines two to four of the code. So if you run these lines of code, you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new data set is appearing, which is called data. And if you click on this data set, a new window is opened, which is showing the structure of our data frame. And as you can see, our data frame contains five rows and three columns. The first column is a group indicator. The second column is called sample and contains different numbers. So let's assume this could be a sample size of the different groups. And the third column is called responses. This contains probabilities. So for instance, this could be the share of correct answers in each group. So for instance, the first group A would have a sample size of 1000 and 0.6. So 60% of the sample size would have given a correct answer. So let's assume that we want to draw these data using the ggplot2 package in a line and bar chart. Then we first would have to install and load the ggplot2 package, as you can see in lines six and seven of the code. I have installed the package already, so for that reason, I'm just going to load it with line seven of the code. And after running this line of code, we are able to use the functions of the ggplot2 package, such as ggplot and geombar, as you can see in the next step in lines nine and 10 of the code. So after running these lines of code, a new data object is appearing at the top right, which is called ggp1. And then in the next line, in line 11 of the code, I'm drawing this plot to the bottom right. So as you can see, we have created a bar chart, which shows a separate bar for each of our groups, A, B, C, D, and E. And it shows the sample size within each group. Now let's assume that we want to add a line chart on top of this bar chart that contains the responses within each of the groups. Then we can apply the code that you can see in lines 13 to 15. So in these lines of code, I'm using the plot object that I have created in the previous step. And then I'm adding to this the geomline function. And within the geomline function, it's important to multiply our responses by the maximum value in our sample color, because otherwise the line will not appear at the right position in our bar chart. And then I'm also specifying the color of this line and I'm specifying the thickness of this line using the LWD argument. So after running these lines of code, a new plot object is appearing at the top right, which is called ggp2. And if you run line 16 of the code, you can see that our plot is updated. And this time it is showing the bar chart that we have created before. And in addition to that, we have added a line chart on top of the bars. However, at this point, we do not have a proper axis for this line. And for that reason, we could add a second y-axis on the right side of our plot, which represents the values in our line chart. And we can do that, as you can see, in lines 18 and 19 of the code. So in these lines of code, I'm using the plot object that I have created in the previous step, the plot object ggp2. And then I'm adding to this the scale y continuous function. And within this function, I'm specifying the sec.axis argument to be equal to a second axis that I'm specifying on the right side of the equal sign. So after running lines 18 and 19 of the code, a new plot object is appearing at the top right, which is called ggp3. And we can draw this plot to the bottom right of our studio by running line 20 of the code. And then you can see that our plot has been updated once again. And this time we have added an additional y-axis on the right side of the plot. And the values on this y-axis correspond to the values in our line. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there.
If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.